they're all part of these South American theft gangs, SATGs, that uh, Biden let over our porous border. What they're doing here in, in New York, they kick in the front door while you're there sleeping. They know you're not going to have a gun because it's New York. They grab all the fobs, which are usually right by the front door, hanging on some hooks or some shit. And then they just whoop, 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 whoop. They see what fob goes to what car and take off. And you obviously call the police and everything, but the cops show up and this was all like 15 minutes ago. They're long gone. Yeah. They're not going to find them. Is this and I kind of like. I've never heard of this. I kind of like that. Uh, what did you say? Is this real? I've never heard about this. So it's People, not real. I'm asking. Like it, it, no, you me, didn't ask. Me, you I didn't said, ask. is this real? And now no, you're you saying did I didn't you ask. You, you're a liberal, right? A little bit. Can't you just, isn't it amazing you can tell? I never heard of this. This is bullshit. No, no, no. That, I've never heard of it. What do you think? I just pulled it out of my fucking ass? Yeah. Talk well, I'm asking, possible. is this real? Is it possible? Well, so you're changing your tone from like, never heard of this. I don't think I said that. I like that. I said, "Is this real?" Playback exactly like that. Play back the tape. It was. This is bullshit. This is a real thing. Talk to cops. Get involved. You lefties live on satellites that circle the the Earth without actually putting your feet on the ground. Talk to people in law enforcement. Talk to people that are involved with the border and these fucking criminals, and you will discover that this is a trend. Kicking in the front door, and this is very common in Westchester. Uh, in the suburbs here, Yonkers, the Bronx, stealing cars. You you talk to cops up where I am, and they go, we didn't have car theft. Like in the old days, you could just smash the drive shaft and hotwire it. Then the mm. car companies figured that out, and there was no car theft for like the past 15 years, basically, and because the fobs are so good. In fact, if you have a BMW and you tell your insurance company, oh, my car was stolen, I left it parked, they're like, no, it wasn't. And you're not getting any money for it. You cannot steal a BMW without the fob. And so these now these thieves are so brazen, they're just stealing fobs. And then I guess the cars end up in like Saudi Arabia. They end up in the Middle East. They ship them over. Uh, I actually uh, found a story that supports what you're saying. Yonkers police warm of key fob hacking scheme. But they do mention a lot of what you said, which is... These key fobs are nice, but they can hang by the front doors, and people are using them combined with single boost signal boosters to do this. So yeah, that's another thing too. They're they're seeing you open your car, and they're hijacking the signal, and then making their own fob. They wait outside. Why why they, send they, it to uh, catch Saudi signal. Arabia or the Middle East? I don't know. I think they don't have any standards mm -hmm. over there. I, I first heard that you know when you hydro lock your car, yeah, uh, it's basically mm -hmm. toast. Because water is in the fucking electrical now. And even if you fix it, you're going to notice problems over the years. So just write it off. Those cars end up in the Middle East, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, at these auctions where they get them for nothing. Maybe water can't survive over there. But now <laughs> I'm hearing that these shipping containers are getting filled with the stolen cars. And they just strip the, the VIN number, whatever, and they sell them over there. Because they're obviously savages in the Middle East and they don't have any standards. They... I fucking hate that those people have any money. <laughs> <laughs> Every time it upset you when you when you see them have nice things. When, you, when they're when riding you see their car on two wheels like that, you know what I mean. <laughs> that's impressive, though. <laughs> that's <laughs> impressive. I like that. I'm like, that's my money. <laughs> <laughs> Do I like their outfits? No regard for personal safety either. I fucking <laughs> hate their outfits. Those stupid long shirts, and they're showing their toes <laughs> everywhere. And then they got a towel on their head. Okay, they, they, fine. You have a point with the toe thing, but the rest of it looks pretty comfortable. No, it looks ridiculous. You're wearing a shirt dress. You look like oh, boys, rip it, Rouge. Oh, look at that, <laughs> dude. Fuck you yeah. guys are I'm acting like me. this is lame. That's dude, I'm on so board for that shit. Cool. That shit's cool as shit. I want to go. I want to be in there. I'll wear a helmet though. That's great. They're talented drivers. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Desert. I think it's they easier than it looks. Camels. That, you know what we should have done? <laughs> we should have the tire. Said, hey, there's this black sludge in your water supply. Uh, we're going to get it out of there, and we're only going to charge you $100 a month, desert people. And they'd be like, oh, <laughs> thank you so much. You're <laughs> and Dude, how are they in that much of a hurry? They need to change the tire like that. <laughs> what do you need to get to? Another hot, sandy location <laughs> right away? You think that's what it was? They were in a big hurry? Yeah. <laughs> they were in a big hurry. They had 40 go. degrees out. Yeah. Man, I didn't know. I didn't know the Middle East had no uh, 
like Saudi Arabia and Dubai. I figured they would like be fancy with cars. Didn't know they were buying our nonsense, our well, stolen like, rem- shit. All right. So remember the Sopranos episode when Tony's sending the cars to Italy and then they're sending them to Russia. I, I, I mean, obviously we've got a whole system here with VIN numbers and everything's cataloged and has yeah. its place in a, in a computer system. But what I don't know if there's a Russian or a, or a European equivalent or even a uh, Middle Eastern equivalent. Maybe you just have a car and be like, yeah, it's mine. Is it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It's just cars and shipping them out. It's a culture, but the West is thing garbage. <laughs> Except I think that it, it, it used to be South America is where the cars would land. Um, mm. I hadn't heard Middle East, but I'm not. I don't know. You're all about Western culture, Western societies. West is the best. That's inarguable. Hey, I, I can't see you guys. Did the guy I yell at for saying never heard of this, is he all quiet now? No, no he's, still he's, talking. <laughs> he's still talking. Yeah, I'm not at all scared. <laughs> oh, like I, I'm a us? grown man. And okay. I okay. can say what I want. I, I if you say something that I it turned out I was wrong. I fact checked I was, it. I was worried I, I hurt your wrong. feelings. Some people don't like confrontation. That's the problem with New Yorkers is they travel and they go like fuck you. And the guy's like, What the fuck? And you're like, No, I'm saying thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being rude. I'm just a northeastern rude person. Yeah, like uh, I was in I was in Greenville, South Carolina recently, and I was wearing white jeans and a Hawaiian shirt. And this guy goes, I like your pants. And I went, fuck you. <laughs> he was coming on to you. You could have had a cool he was, experience. He was mortified. I'm like, mind your own business. I don't care what your opinion is on my fucking pants. You don't See, I, how nice I have like a, I have like a gut reaction that like in public, I have to be polite. If that guy would have come, I'm from the Midwest. And so if that guy would have been like nice pants to me, even if I have no desire to speak to him, it's like, all right, I got to hit it back. I got to at least say thank you and you're like mid- smile. You're two-thirds on your way to a threesome trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be, you know, new, there's new, so much bullshit in New York with like these homeless people and crackheads, and they come up to you in the street, and like, hey man, can I talk to you for a second? I got this thing, so I can need a bus ticket. Like, no, even today, I was in Newark, New Jersey, and this woman was like, Mexican woman was like, cr- not woman, she was like 20, whatever, and she was crying, sitting on a step, and she goes, Mister, Mister, I just went, I have no feelings. <laughs> and then there's some other woman Newark is you drop your money <laughs> and I was like I don't want that so there are other cultures that highly value lighter skin I'm thinking of India I worked in IT oh, Gavin oh. doesn't know this oh, but Asia, I, I, yeah. I worked in, um, in with computers in IT for a long time and that means I work with a lot of Indians and those guys are just putting creams on to like bleach yeah. their skin or even just like the opposite of a bronzer. You know how white people yeah, yeah. Everyone knows like, that. Dude, you don't yeah. know stuff. <laughs> I just told I just You're knew always that. like, wait, I never heard of that. Yeah. I'm always knows. like that. What other what, what other times have I like how many times India, have I done that? Indians have whitening cream and yes. the caste system in Africa is the same. The lighter the skin. Even in even in America, we quietly uh uh value lighter skin blacks more than dark skin blacks which is why the cosby show had all these mulattoes on it because people found mochaccino mochaccino more palatable bloody bloody fucker motherfucker (laughs) (laughs) gavin i'm fascinated by the story of vice i don't know it but vice i think of as a left kind of like a liberal news source am i on target with that currently talking right now the liberal dude yeah. So the Vice guy doesn't know anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm asking. In the I'm AI asking. who hasn't heard of anything. Jesus uh, fuck, Gavin. Answer the question, you shit fuck. What was the On question? Vice. What when you started that and question. then you left it, can you tell the story of how that evolved? I'm curious. I think it might be a good story. What are we gonna go put on a pot of coffee and spend the next six hours? It's it's I don't know how to make this story short. Oh um, okay. Sarush was a junkie. He had a revelation where Allah told him he's going to stop doing heroin and start something new. It's the- Gavin Hi. and I didn't get along. Oh, it seems like a, a little a little bit of barbs back and forth. But, but overall, I think you guys bonded over motorcycles at the end. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just Mr. Positive PR spin right now. <laughs> I thought like- the vice question was a good one, and I thought it led to an interesting segment on the show. He was just taking shots at over anything. So what I was going to say after the show was 
you bore the brunt of it on that question in particular. However, doing so got us a really interesting story that I appreciated yeah. him telling. Um, so kudos there to you, I guess, for, for asking the questions, even if he didn't like the question or thought it was silly. I think yeah, I don't was know just, why he would be offended by it. Uh, I don't I don't think he was. He's just on a little. But, yeah, little, I think he was wall. just teasing. But it was funny because yeah. Woody asked about Vice. And after he did, he's like, what, you got fucking six hours? And I look down at my notepad and it's like, be sure to ask about Vice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Woody, what the fuck? <laughs> Where you got six hours? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that was good. I, I never understood the evolution of Vice or when he left. or Because I remembered yeah. back in like the mid 2000s, it was like a cool media source where they would do stuff like, we sent a reporter to live for 20 days in, in Sentinelese Island. Or did they do the North Korea like undercover thing? With they Lisa, did. Yes. Lisa you Ling or something? One hunt, I, I'm now remembering that's the All thing right, I'm so, thinking of. Yeah. So we've talked about this before, but it is fascinating if you've never seen it. They, I think her name is Lisa Ling. She's this very attractive Asian lady who's probably 50 but looks 30. And they went undercover along with an optometrist or uh, an, an eye surgeon um to north korea to to do all these cataract surgeries for these poor north koreans and they were they, they were like they had like a four to five day pass some brief amount of time and so the doctor is doing dozens of surgeries a day or something he's he does like a hundred people he gives them their vision back and at least one and sometimes both eyes in the course of a week and it's almost they they gather in what looks like a church but i don't know if they're allowed religion there and it's the and everybody's getting their bandages off at the same time a whole congregation of people is literally being given their sight back by the man standing in the front and they bypass him to thank the great leader's portrait. Gas. 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 Gas.